As Rails developers, our development environment is often quite different from our production environment. Oftentimes we're working in a completely different operating system than what our code runs on in production. And also, some Rails apps have a heavy set of dependencies that can be difficult to duplicate across the various developers' machines. Well, Vagrant can help out with this. It allows you to set up virtual environments, which means you can set up a little mini Linux distro inside of your OS, which allows you to run your application and all of the dependencies in one little portable package that you can even share with others. I encourage every Rails developer to at least try this out because it will give you a better understanding of how to set up a production environment for your Rails app, or maybe you could use it as a staging environment or just use it for developing your Rails application. Many use cases, but let me show you how this works. Now Vagrant uses Oracle's VirtualBox, so you'll first need to download and install this. So to do that, we'll just click on Downloads, and you can see it supports many different operating systems. I'll just download the OS X version. And then once you open up that disk image, you could just go through the nice installer image that they provide and just walk through the installer here. Now Vagrant itself is a Ruby gem, so you could just run gem install Vagrant after you set up VirtualBox to get that installed. Now the next step is to add a box to Vagrant. And if you go to Vagrant boxes, you can see there's a nice long list here of various publicly available boxes, which you can use and they're all different Linux distros and setups and so on. Uh, the one I'm going to use is provided by the official Vagrant site and that's just the Ubuntu 10.04 uh, Lucid distro. And then you just run Vagrant box add and then give it a name such as Lucid32 and then pass in the URL to the box. Now the box is quite large so I've already downloaded it and you can also pass in a file path to this as well. I just called it Lucid32.box on my local system here. So I'm just going to add the box through this. So it looks like this box was added successfully. Now we can use this box to set up our virtual environment. But with Vagrant, this is normally done in a project-specific manner. But we currently don't have a Rails app here, so let's first make one. Rails new, uh, let's call it to-do. So we can CD into that project here. And then we can create a virtual machine that is specifically for running this project and its dependencies. We can do that with Vagrant in it, and then passing the name of the box you want to use, such as Lucid32. Notice that all this did was create a Vagrant file. So let's take a look at that Vagrant file that was generated for us. And this file here specifies how you want to set up the Vagrant box for this specific project. And you can see right now the only uncommented line is specifying which box to use, but there are many other settings you can pass in here. I'll let you read the comments for details on those. And now time for the magic. Just run Vagrant up to set up your virtual machine. All right, looks like that booted up fine. Then we can just SSH into this by calling Vagrant SSH. And now we're inside of our Ubuntu virtual machine. Awesome. Now this is pretty much a bare bones setup with very little installed, but a couple things worthy of note. One is that we have a Vagrant user set up for us and that we're currently logged in as, and we have pseudo privileges that doesn't require a password which will work fine for us here, just developing on our local machine in this safe environment. Now it also set up a shared directory for us at slash Vagrant. If we go in there, you can see that this contains all of the content of our Rails application. So this is sharing the directory of the Vagrant project that we set up with uh, our Vagrant VM here. Awesome. Now our objective here is to get our Rails application running inside of this virtual machine. So we're going to have to set up our dependencies so let's make sure we have SQLite installed and Ruby. Now this box actually comes with a version of Ruby. You can see it's Ruby 187, and this is designed for running Chef recipes. What Chef is, is a way to automate the setup of your server. So for example, in this case, if we wanted to install Ruby 1.9 and SQLite, we could just supply the necessary Chef recipes and it'll automatically install those for us. Now this integrates really nicely with Vagrant, but it's a big topic in itself and something I will cover in a future episode. Here though, I want to show you how you can set a server up without using Chef, and I recommend that at the beginning anyway if you're just learning how to set this up because it will give you a better idea of how everything works together. So the first thing I will do inside of my virtual machine is run apt-get update, and then once that's done, I will just apt-get install to install a few packages here. So here I've got the build essentials, uh, zlib, git, and SQLite3. So after this is done, all we'll need is to install a Ruby 1.9.
Now there are a variety of ways that we can get Ruby 1.9. We could install it from source, or use the excellent RVM, or use something that's a bit newer on the scene, which is Ruby environment. See, this is the great thing about Vagrant, is that you can experiment with tools that you may have never used before, and do it in a safe environment, and if you mess things up, you could just wipe it out and try it again. So here I'll just do this quickly by using the commands presented in the readme here, starting off with the git clone. So I'll clone the repo into the home directory here, and then add the path to our bash profile, and also add the init command to our bash profile. And then I could just reload that bash profile for that to take effect. So now we have this Ruby environment command we can use to manage our Ruby versions, but still no way to install Ruby. So I'll use Ruby build for doing this. I'll just first clone the git repository here, and then go into there, and then run the uh, installer command that they provide. So now with this set up, I can just do rb environment install 192 patch 290. Now that command will take a while, but once it's finished, you can see that it successfully compiled Ruby. Now you need to run rb environment rehash whenever you adjust the binaries like we did here. And then we can tell our Ruby environment to change our global default to that 192 patch 290 Ruby install we just made. And now when we check the version of Ruby, well, would you look at that, Ruby 192. We're all set up. So now we can work on getting our Rails application running. So let's go back to the Vagrant directory, which is our shared directory, which contains our Rails app. Now I need to run the bundle command here to install our gem dependencies, but as you can see, I don't have bundler installed. So let's do gem install bundler here. And then with that gem installed, we have to run Ruby environment rehash to set up that executable. Now we can run the bundle command and install all of the gems. So now the moment of truth. We can run bundle exec rails server. Let's see if it starts up. And it doesn't look like it worked. We can see the problem is that it says our JavaScript runtime is unavailable, which makes sense because Rails 3.1 requires a JavaScript runtime and this Ubuntu install doesn't have one. So our dependencies aren't quite complete yet. Now there is a quick solution for this. And that is to go to your project's gem file and add the gem, the Ruby Racer. And that will install the V8 JavaScript engine, so that'll work for Rails 3.1. So run the bundle command once more to install that gem. And then once it's installed, let's try running our bundle exec command again to start up our Rails server. So far, it looks good. Yay, so now we have our Rails app running on port 3000 but we can't access this directly because this is still behind Vagrant. We have to tell Vagrant to forward this port. Now we can do that inside of the Vagrant file of our project here. You can see we have a section here on port forwarding. So if we make a port forward call here, and let's call it Rails, you can give it an, any name you want as long as it's unique. Let's forward port 3002. I'll just forward it to 3000 as well on our local host here. Now, because we made a change to our Vagrant config, we need to exit out of our Vagrant uh, shell here and then call Vagrant reload to reload that config. Now, notice that that command shut down our virtual machine and set up the port forwarding for the 3000 port there. So now we can SSH into this again and then go into our Vagrant directory and then run our bundle command again, just like that. And you can see that booted up our server again under port 3000. Now with port forwarding, let's try it out. So now when I visit localhost port 3000, you can see I get the welcome aboard sign because it looks like the Rails application is working. Awesome. Now because our Rails application is shared with Vagrant, any changes we make to it here will automatically be updated in our virtual machine. For example here, let's update this index.html file to say you're writing Ruby on Rails with Vagrant. And now when we reload this page here, you can see that the text automatically updates because it's sharing that application to with the VM. Now Vagrant provides a number of commands for helping manage your virtual machine. You could do Vagrant status to check if it's currently running, and it is. You could do Vagrant suspend to temporarily stop it, and then Vagrant resume to pick that back up again where it was last left off. Or you can run Vagrant Halt to completely shut down the virtual machine. And then you would need to run Vagrant up again to bring it back up online. 
Now one of the coolest commands here is vagrant package, and that will package up your virtual machine, the current state, and put it all in a box file, which you can then share and distribute and uh, quickly recreate your virtual machine that way. You can see that this generates a package.box file, which contains the data necessary to rebuild this virtual machine. So this means we could run vagrant destroy to completely destroy our virtual machine, and then we can add it back again like we added the uh, lucid32 box, but this time use our package box, and that'll bring it up to the state that we left it. Well, that's it for this episode on Vagrant. It's a really great solution for taking your Rails app's runtime dependencies and isolating them all into a virtualized environment, which you can then package up and maybe distribute amongst other developers, or uh, just use it to simulate production, or use it as a staging server. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless. And Vagrant becomes even better once you add Chef to it, and I will be covering that in a future episode. In the pro episode this week, I will show you how to set up Nginx and Unicorn inside of the virtual machine we created in this episode and use that to host our Rails application. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just go to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 a month.